Hi friends, I'm Carolyn with Carp Creative Designs. If you're new here, I do custom kids embroidery shirts. Pretty much anything, children, I can embroider. I also do do adult stuff, but I don't have it on my Etsy shop, Carp Creative Designs, yet. I'm gearing most of that towards the kids stuff and babies, sorry about that, and babies. So I also do heat transfer vinyl, which adheres to the shirts. I put it on with a professional heat press so it stays on forever. So I'm here today. I am actually working on a couple of things. I got an order that I want to finish up today for this. I just put this in my shop too. So it's so pretty cool. And I'm working on that today. I just, I've been, I started it a little bit ago. Do, 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 do. I have the PE 800 embroidery machine. It is a smaller machine. It's a little easier to use for me. Um, some people prefer the bigger machines. I know a lot of people in my crafting community who use um, the uh, industrial big ones, you know, multi-needle, whole bunch of stuff. This works for me. This is pretty simple. Um, I like it a lot. So I just kind of stick with what I have right now. I, I think about the big needle machines and I get anxiety because there's so many needles, so many things. I watch the people um, do theirs and it's just, it's, yeah, it scares me. So I received today from one of my crafting buddies, um, Liz from Coffee Powered Home, um, a shirt that I ordered from her shop. I order from some of the crafters in the community. I order from their um, shops as well because, you know, we got to support each other through this journey. You can't just do it yourself. You need, you know, to help others and others will help you. So, you know, that's what we do. That's how it works. Um, if any of you, I've been in business a long time, not this Etsy business, but I've been in business for a very long time and you got to help others and, you know, work together in it. And especially in this community, everybody does things differently. Everybody has different machines, different designs, different threads. I mean, and you know, I like to, I like to see how, you know, everybody does their stuff and their packaging and you know, their product, everything. So I received Liz's today from Coffee Powered Home and in the front of my package was this little envelope. Okay. I am not going to lie. This is the cutest thing ever. I, I just love this. And inside of it, there's, um, instructions, a little instruction sheet that I love, a, a cute thank you note, and a couple of stickers that I just, I just love. I think this is really, this adds a little personal touch to her orders. And I, I just think this is great. And everybody loves to get little extra things in their package. And this envelope is just, this is adorable. This is so cute. I love it. I absolutely love it. I am not that creative. But that's, that's what I got. And the shirt that I got from her says, sleep, don't make money. And it's got her shop there, Coffee Powered Home. And it's, this is, I got long sleeve because I'm, I work, my studio's in the basement of my house. And with the air conditioning on, it gets super cold down here. So this is really, this is awesome. I love this. And the, and the shirt, the quality of the shirt is really good. I really, yeah, I really like this. This turned out like perfect. Great job, Liz. Thank you so much. So if you guys want to visit Liz's shop, um, I think on Etsy, her shop is called Anna's Custom Gifts and Tees. So it's N Tees is N capital T E E S. Okay. So yeah. That's pretty cool. I really like that. It turned out really nice. I love all of her um, branding on everything from her, you know, from the package you get, you receive to the invoice. Everything's got really nice branding. So it's very, very cool. So yeah, so I'm working, like I said, I'm going to continue to work on this shirt. If I can remember what I'm doing here. I moved all of my threads because I thought I was done with them, but I'm not done with them. Not even close. Um, I use, I use uh, Madeira threads. Most, I, I use some SIM threads. I purchased those when I first bought my machine because it was something that someone had recommended 
and I thought, well, I'll give them a try because I don't really know a whole lot about embroidery. I know a little about sewing, a little, but not, not about embroidery. So embroidery is a whole new ball game for me, but I'm, I've been doing it for about a year now and I absolutely love it. It is so much fun. So I've been doing that. But I do, um, when I'm using the bigger cones, Madeira cones, I like to use this thread stand. It just makes it a little bit easier. And it doesn't, because obviously they won't fit on the little spool that I have on the PA-100. I do, I know some people don't even use the, um, the little spools on here, but I do. I don't have any problems with it. It doesn't get ma messed up, none of that stuff. So yeah, so I use them up here. The big ones I just use back there with that if that makes sense to you. So yeah, so I'm working on this order. I want to get it out Monday. It's not due to go out until Thursday, I believe, but I'll get it out Monday, get that done, stay a step ahead of the game. And yeah, so I'm going to continue to work on this. If you guys want to hang out and watch a little bit, I'll, you know, speed it up so you can see what the final process is going to be. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. thread break. I had a feeling that was going to happen with this because I kind of stuck it in there pretty quickly. So let's see if it works now. Also, I cut all of my jump stitches right away because I hate all those little jump stitches in between my letters and everything. And if you could see, there is a little cutting thing here. So as soon as it starts to slow down, I know it takes four taps and then it's going to move. So I just hit it. And then it moves and it's already cut the jump jump stitch so I don't have to worry about that. Just a little tip there. for me. I do 
as small as um, newborn in zero to three months. So I don't, I have no issues with it at all. Of course, when you do the zero to three months, three to six months, and the um, uh, newborn ones, you just want to use a four by four hoop instead of the five by seven hoop because you're working with a smaller area, so you want a smaller design. You want to get the design as big as you possibly can on the on the shirt but you don't want it um you know on the little tiny ones you really don't want it to be super big because okay this one just had a cut for some reason I'll have to cut that when it's done yeah I, like I said I try to catch those jump stitches and Cut them before the needle heads off to the next spot. <laughs> when you get used to the machine, you get used to how yours goes, how fast. And and you can see there, I was a step, a little bit ahead of the game there. And then there's the end of the stitch. So you don't have that little piece of thread going from one spot to the next. I hate that. It drives me crazy. Normally, I'll even cut off those little ones before it continues on, but for purposes of this video, I'm going to wait until I get done with this color. And like I said, you kind of get an idea of when it's going to move. Especially if you got a lot of letters together um, and a lot of spaces where it's jumping around from, you know, color, the same color, it's jumping from one thing to the next, you're going to have a lot of those jump stitches. So for me, it's just easier to just go ahead and just take the jump stitches right out. And my bobbin just ran out of thread. But I think this was pretty much done anyway. I gotta change my bobbin and since you guys are here I can show you how to do that as you can see this bobbin is dead dead so we just take this off pull the bobbin out I buy um, pre-wound bobbins because they are way easier than me trying to wind a bunch of bobbins nobody's got time for that and then you just follow the little path, pull it out a little bit, cut it, put it back in, and we are ready to go. While I have this out, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these jump stitches real quick. I like bringing it in from the back because it's less material, so it goes on a little bit easier. And like I said, I think this is pretty much done. Yep, um, my thread came out. I'm going to back this up just a little bit. Back it up. Uh oh, I really lost it. No idea where it is in there. You can. There's a spot on the machine where you can click on the screen here, and you can back up your stitches. You can you can back them up pretty far too. It doesn't matter how far you want to go. I can go all the way back to the beginning if I wanted to, but I just went back about. It about 10 stitches and I started it over from this spot. Normally, 
normally when I take my, when I make my thread color, I cut the top and pull the thread from the bottom. So it's going the same direction that it's used to going. And I'll show you guys how I use my stand here. I use the stand when I use the, like I said, the big colors. I don't usually use it when I'm using the smaller, the smaller spools because I haven't had an issue. So I know I've heard some people say um, that they that they've had issues. Let's slide this over a bit that they've had issues with the little spooler thing, but honestly, I have not. And in the year that I've had this, I did have it in the shop once um, because I couldn't use my automatic threader for some reason. It was just not working, and then it turned out that I had a bent piece. So, all right, here we go. Hopefully this is in a spot where it's not going to get caught. I normally have it right next to it. So. I can already see that I'm going to have a little... Alright, let's try it. Let's see what happens. the project I was working on and I'm just going to trim the all these hanging stitches off the back I don't like to take them all off because I think some of them are there for stability reasons to keep the design intact I take a majority of them off the long ones especially just clean it up, make it look pretty. I do put um, tender touch on the back of my shirts because then it makes the back of the shirt soft and the child doesn't, you know, get like itchy and stuff from the embroidery thread. I know some kids too, if I've heard had like some reaction, big reactions to the thread rubbing against their body. So putting the tender touch on softens that up. And then as you wash the shirt, you know, obviously it gets a little bit softer as well. And you don't have to worry about that because I'm sure, I don't know how long, but I'm sure the uh, tender touch you know, won't stay on there forever, but 
I don't really know how long it'll stay on there for. But I think long enough where, um, you know, by the time it does wash out or come off or whatever, it's already, the shirt's already softened up quite a bit. And in, you know, my case, somebody needs me to re-tender touch something, hell, I'll do that too. I don't, it don't matter. Whatever works, right? I want to make sure everybody's happy. All right. I know this is kind of boring. Sorry, guys. Just want to make sure I get a majority of this off. lint roll. I use a lint roller on all of my shirts as well just to get up any loose threads. I swear sometimes I feel like I got them all out and then I see some really long ones here. Alright, that's okay. So I took all that off and then I'll just take it off the And this is cutaway stabilizer that I use for the shirts. So I will cut this off around as close around the shirt as I can get. This is the part I hate because I always worry I'm going to cut right through. Because I use white shirts. I always worry that I'm going to cut too close. I'm going to cut the shirt. Hopefully not today. Actually, I've never actually cut the shirt. So, so I'm not really worried. I probably shouldn't say that, right? Because I will totally jinx myself. And using the 501 spray makes the shirt, the backing stick to the shirt. So sometimes when I'm cutting it out, I feel like it's still a little sticky on the shirt. And I really don't want to cut the shirt. There's some loose pieces back here still that I missed. And I'll just trim it up because I want to, like I said, get it as close to the design as possible. Because unfortunately with mon with uh, embroidery shirts, you're going to see the, the um, stabilizer on the back. It's just, unless you have a dark shirt. And again, you know, this will soften up and... It'll be a lot better. It won't be as pronounced. If you guys have any ideas on how to keep that from happening where you can't see it, like I said, oh god, I almost cut the shirt. Just leave that in the comments and it'll help me. Help me to help anybody else who may have that question down the road too. All right, I think that's all I've cut. All right. So now I'm gonna going to put my tender touch on the back. I'm just gonna iron this real quick. Put on my heat press just to. This is what the tender touch looks like. It's very, very soft. It's very soft. I'll put that on there for a couple of minutes.
Not quite. I swear sometimes it does real quick, other times it takes a little bit longer. Okay, and there it is on the back. Covers up all those ugly stitches. use this lint roller to keep my area clean. I also have a little vacuum that I use on here if I'm, you know, spending the whole day in my room here. Super cute. Again, it's probably backwards to you guys. So then what I do is I will put this back in the packaging it came, the shirt came in to begin with. Um, Angela from uh, AJ Blinks, she has all of the shirts come in these little plastic bag with the size and everything on them. So I just go ahead and put them. Oh, I just saw my lights flicker. I must have too many things plugged in down here. <laughs> Not that it's ever mattered in the past, but hey, you never know, right? All right. So I put them back in here and then I will, I have a thank you card with washing instructions on the back that I also stick inside here, inside the little plastic. I have another thank you card, just thanking for, you know, supporting my small business. And then I have my business cards, Carp Creative Designs. You probably can't see those are backwards. I'm still working on getting that together. So I throw those in there and then I throw a few stickers. I have some stickers to put in there. Because it's a back to school shirt, I'm going to throw in some back to school stickers. So these will go in there as well. And I just, I'm not as creative as some people. I just kind of toss this all in here. And then I close the shirt back up. So it's just basically in the back of the shirt. There's the shirt. I probably should I probably should come up with something a little more creative, right? Maybe. And then I use these thank you poly envelopes. And I'll put the invoice. I do have some thank you cards here. Wow, this is really weird. Um, I have thank you little thank you cards. I put these. I put one on the invoice, and I always sign my name on the invoice as well. And I put that and the outfit in the bag. And I try to because I have such small packages. I try to line these up so the thank you is on both sides. Like it'll say thank you on one side, thank you on the other. Or thank you. So 
So it says thank you. And I threw another thank you sticker. These are my thank you stickers that I use. Then that's it. Then I'll print out my packing slip and get this in the mail tomorrow. So basically, that's what I have for you guys today. Thanks for hanging out with me. I didn't want to leave the video on while I did that entire thing because it does take a little bit longer on the PE 800. And it's loud, so you're not able to hear too good. And the lighting, because it's such a bright light underneath the, the needle, you can't really see unless I'm holding the camera right on top of it. So, But that's all I have for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you liked it, give the video a thumbs up on your way out. And if you want to see more videos from me, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and tap that bell and it'll notify you every time I upload a video. I think I'm going to be doing a video maybe tomorrow or Monday um, for inventory. I have some inventory I have to do. So I'll show you guys kind of how I do my inventory. It's real simple. It's not very high tech. No techie stuff here in this house. No. Um, yeah, so I'll show you that in my next video. You guys have a great day. I want to shout out to Annabelle, my biggest fan out there. Um, hope you're watching my video today and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.